Welcome back to Light Upon Light. Uh, we've just been talking about the importance of dying as a Muslim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in verse 103 of Surah Ali Imran, chapter 3, He orders us to unite together, to stay together. And He commands us to hold the fast all together by the rope which he stretches out for us and not to be divided among ourselves. The reason we have so many problems in our communities, in our societies, is because we are divided among ourselves. Our hearts are not joined together. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and remember, with gratitude, Allah's favor on you. For you were enemies and he joined your hearts in love so that by his grace you became brethren. Therefore, islahu that al to mend the relationship between members of the same family is very important in Islam. Unfortunately, there are parents who do not talk to their children and husbands who do not talk to their wives and neighbors who do not talk to each other and so on. Islam is a religion of peace and justice. Therefore, we need to make peace with our own selves and then make peace with members of our own family, the next of kin, our neighbors and our community. And in order to achieve this, we must be able to communicate and talk to everybody, irrespective of his religion or his faith or his creed. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the reason for this creation is to get to know each other. So peace will eventually lead to the unity of the Muslim Ummah, insha'Allah. It's also important to understand that some people must learn about how to invite others to the way of Allah, how to command or enjoin what is right and how to forbid what is wrong. Not everybody is qualified to do this. Therefore, there is no harm that some people will specialize in this and will know how to do it and to follow the style of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because in verse 110, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says, You are the best of peoples evolved for mankind. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. Subject to the following conditions. Enjoining what is right, forbidding what is wrong, and believing in Allah. So if we comply with these three conditions, then we will be regarded as the best of peoples evolved for mankind. In verse 159, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes some of the great qualities which he gave the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, It is part of the mercy of Allah that you, Muhammad, deals gently with them. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ You are so gentle with them. If you were harsh-hearted or severe, they would have broken away from about you. وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيدَ الْقَلْبِ لَمْ فَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ so, how do we deal with our children? How do we deal with our wives? Are we harsh-hearted? Are we severe? If we are, then they will all leave us. They will break away from us. I will not have any peace in our family. So what, the, what Allah is ordering the Prophet? فَعْفُ عَنْهُمْ Forgive them. Pass over their faults. وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ Ask Allah to forgive them. 
وشاورهم في الأمر and consult with them regarding your daily affairs وشاورهم في الأمر there is a chapter in the Quran called سورة الشورة consultation one of the qualities of the believers وأمرهم شورة بينهم those who consult how often do you consult your wife if you want to do something how often do you consult your children How often do you consult your colleagues at work or your friends or your relatives? Consultation in Islam is very important. Islam does not believe in dictatorship. It's my word and it's my way and I decide you have no choice. There is no such thing in Islam. You must learn to consult with your wife, with your children so that the ship will continue to sail and there will be no difficulties facing the journey. To consult means you listen to the other people, you listen to their advice, and then it's up to you. If you want to take it, take it. If you don't want to take it, it's up to you. Having said so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this to the Prophet, فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ Whenever you have decided to do something, put your... Put your full trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah loves those who put their trust into Him and mutawakkileen. Allah doesn't lie pure or hesitant. And you must do your istikhara. If there is something you want to choose, you want to decide, and you consulted so many people, and now you made up your mind and you would like to do it, then you should do a consultation prayer, al-istikhara. You pray two rak'ah and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide you to what is right. To end the Surah Ali Imran, I'm going to explain verse 186. 186 talks about trials and tests. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is confirming. You shall certainly be tried and tested in your positions and in your personal selves. And you shall certainly hear much that will grieve you from those who receive the book before you and from those who worship many gods. Something happening all the time now. So we are going to be tested in our properties, in our money, in our positions, in ourselves. And we are going to hear a lot which will upset us. Whether in the media or the press or the neighbors, or the country you live in. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a way out. وَإِن تَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ But, if you persevere patiently, and guard against evil, and fear your Lord, then that will be a determining factor in all affairs. فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ I'm going to move now to Surah An-Nisa chapter 4 and I think maybe we'll leave this to the next episode so uh, thank you for being with me and hope to see you inshallah in the next episode of Light Upon light. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.